In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Good people, we are on Tuesday, and we continue with um, faith series, and we continue with what we picked yesterday about the benefit of obedience. Our last word was John 14, 23. If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him. And we will come to him and make our home with him. I'm talking about now, this is what I'm talking about, personal relationship. It is in John 14, verse 23. The other benefit of obedience is that we are able to bear much fruit. You see... When our friendship with the Lord deepens, something happens. Of course, it is not automatic. It is as a result of um, growth that is purposed. We become fruitful because we are branches of a live vine. The vine is alive. So the branches automatically bears fruits. We are connected to the master. So it is, I would call it, it is almost natural that with that connection, then we bear much fruits. We are able to guide others spiritually, we are able to instruct others. We are able to direct others spiritually. That's how we become fruitful. And the more importantly, our life has meaning, even unto ourselves. Remember we talked about the fullness of joy. At that point, at, at some point, the Christ in us, and I love this, the Christ in us becomes attractive. I don't know whether you have ever looked at someone and you admired them. Oh, that's a gracious lady of faith. Oh, that's a gentleman of faith. That man, that man loves the Lord. That woman loves the Lord. When somebody can say that of you or about you, you know what that means? It means that the Christ in you is actually attractive to another person to the extent that that person would want to be like you. I have heard many people say, oh, I admire that person. I would want to go to their church. Uh-huh. It is the Christ in you attracting that person. Now, if you didn't know, that is part of what we talk about fruitfulness. You are able to win, as it were, souls for Christ. The other benefit is that uh, we are no longer in darkness. Why? Because when we are in him, and he is the way, he is the truth, and he is the light. Of course, we are never any other any time in darkness. In John chapter 1, um, the, the great prologue, 1 to 18, we are told that he came to his own, he came to his own. His own did not receive him because they preferred darkness. Uh -huh. Where Christ is, there is no darkness because darkness and light cannot coexist. They exist, they, yeah, they exist in what we call mutual exclusion. Exclusiveness. Mutual exclusiveness means when one is present, the other automatically departs. Where there is light, there can be no darkness. And where there is darkness, there can be no light. Even if it is a small light, because it dispels darkness, because of the concept of mutual exclusiveness. So, when we have enjoyed 
the friendship with our Lord, and we are obedient as it were, then we are able to get out of darkness. No wonder you, have, you may have heard many people say, oh, I have seen the light. Saying that you have seen the light, of course you say that, oh, I believed in some lies. Now I know the truth. And the truth is Jesus, of course. Even when you are speaking politically, that I have seen the light, I have known that this is the side, of, the side that represents truth. Any truth, of course, there are different types of truth. We talk about divine truth and, and many other types of truths. But the point is, when I say I have seen the light, I am saying I am tired of darkness. And in this context, it means that because I am, I am having this friendship with my master, then I am no longer in the dark. Please read John chapter 12, verse 46. When we obey, we gain wisdom. Now let me read for you Matthew 7, verses 24 and 25. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives all to all who gives to all liberally and without reproach. And it will be given to him. That is in James 1, verse 5. Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock, and the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat on the house, and it did not fall, for it was founded on the rock. That is Matthew 7, verses 24 and 25. The house built on the rock. Wisdom helps us to make the right decision. I have said in the past that wisdom is a result of deep connection with our master. I have used this word a million times about connection because it is important. And the reason why I talk about it is because we are living in an age where we think that our churches will win us heaven denominations or religions cannot win new heaven. In fact, and I have said this still in this platform, part of the reasons why some of us will never see the face of God, it is because of our churches. Part of the reason. In fact, I remember when I was, when I was giving you the, um, a reflection on what will not matter in heaven. One of them that will not matter in heaven our churches. Another thing that will not matter in heaven, our way of worship. Uh -huh. Unfortunately, the two have become the center stage. They are the central point of our existence because we think that my church is more superior than her church. My way of worship is more superior than his way of worship to the extent that now we ostracize others because they are not as good, as holy as we are. Men and the women of wisdom are able to make decisions and are able to live as the Lord would want them to be. We become holy and blameless. This is another benefit. Ephesians 1 Verses 3 to 6. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ, just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestined us to adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to himself, according 
to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the, of the, of the glory of his grace, by which he made us accepted in the beloved. Ephesians chapter 1, verses 3 to 6. We live in freedom. Freedom, again, is a fruit of an obedient soul. When we are obedient, we live in freedom because it is what that is desired for the children of God. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17. Now the Lord is the Spirit. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Aha. Uh -huh. So when we are connected, we live in this liberty. And finally, answered prayer. Our prayers are answered. Our prayers are answered. You know why? Why do we say this? There is a difference between the prayer of somebody who has a relationship with God and one who hasn't. A person who has a relationship with God is able to align their prayer intentions with the will of God. They will not do what we call bumbling or what one writer talks about, talks about useless prayers. Useless prayers are largely very selfish, especially the prayers we do so that we can make a statement uh -huh, that God do this to me so that they may know that uh, I am not that simple. You want God to give you something so that you can use it to punish others. Uh, that writer calls that prayer a useless prayer. Maybe we can have a conversation at some point and then we ask, do we really have useless prayers? But that is not a conversation for today. The point is, uh, when you know Christ, you are able to align your intentions with his will and therefore you'll have your prayers answered all the time. All the time. Thank you. May the Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Do have a productive Tuesday.